Hello, I'm Matthew Dryden. I'm an infection doctor, so I diagnose and treat patients with infections, and I use antibiotics. And I'm here with Mary to talk about uh, antibiotics today. OK, so um, I have a question. Um, what's the difference between antibiotics and other medicines? Well, they are totally different from all other medicines. If you think about it, you take a medicine to affect something in your body. It may control pain, it may control your blood pressure, or it will have some other effect on your body tissues. Antibiotics don't work against your body tissues. They are there to attack bacteria, bacteria that are invading the body. So instead of affecting the human physiology, they're there to kill bacteria. OK, so... Um, if they work on bacteria, do they also work on viruses? No, they don't work on viruses. Viruses are also microorganisms, but if you think about it, viruses are tiny, ti the smallest of microorganisms, and they invade cells, so they're inside your body's cells. Antibiotics need a bacterial target to kill the bacteria. They don't get into cells, they don't attach to viruses and don't kill viruses. And of course, a lot of infections are caused by viruses. A lot of minor infections, coughs, colds, sore throats, most of those are caused by viruses and antibiotics are not going to treat those. When you say coughs and colds, does that also include flu or chest infections? Well, it certainly includes flu because that's caused by a virus. Some chest infections, some severe chest infections like pneumonia, which none of us get very often, are caused by bacteria. But most minor chest infections are just viral infections. I've heard about this thing called antibiotic resistance, but I'm not sure what it is. Could you explain what it is for me? Yeah, well, you've heard of Darwin, I bet. Yes. Natural yeah. selection, survival of the fittest, all that kind of stuff. Bacteria are living organisms. We're all, you know, we're all living organisms. And antibiotics kill bacteria. So certain bacteria can develop a way of evading that attack by antibiotics. And if they do that, they become resistant. So the antibiotics will no longer kill that bacteria. So they, of course, proliferate in the presence of antibiotics and they become the predominant bacteria that are then resistant to the very medicine, the antibiotics, that we're using to treat them. Um, so is that not a problem for doctors and scientists? Is it really a problem for me? It's actually a problem for all of us. Antibiotic resistance is a global health threat. Um, Antibiotics are so important for modern medicine. We couldn't do all the clever things that, 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 that are done in modern medicine. Transplanting organs, replacing joints, major surgery, treating cancer. All of those uh, need antibiotics to control infection when that occurs in those patients. If we overuse antibiotics across the world, antibiotic resistance becomes a major global health threat. And then we've got no antibiotics to treat these infections. So it's not just a problem for doctors or for scientists to develop new treatments it's actually a problem for all of us and it's something we all have to take responsibility for we have to use antibiotics appropriately and safely to minimize antibiotic resistance otherwise we're all going to suffer can't they just develop new ones? Well, they're trying to develop new ones, but bacteria are very specific structures, and antibiotics have to attach to bits of those bacteria. They have to attach to the outside of the bacteria or to enzymes within the bacteria and damage those. So there's a limited number of targets that the antibiotics can act on. And so we're sort of running out of chemical compounds, really. Uh, scientists are working very hard to develop uh, new agents, but, you know, it is a real struggle. So what can I do? to prevent antibiotic resistance? Well, the best thing to do is, is not to go and persuade your doctor to give you antibiotics for relatively minor viral infections. So A, it's not going to work, and B, you'll just um, uh, get colonised with resistant bacteria, which you could then spread to your friends and family. So don't demand antibiotics. That's probably the best thing that, that individuals can do. But also to be aware of the problem and spread the message that, that antibiotics are life-saving in serious infection, but they shouldn't be used for minor viral infections because they're not going to work and they'll only um, potentiate, increase the problem of antibiotic resistance. And um, sometimes when I take antibiotics I might get side effects um, that make me want to stop taking the course early. Um, is it important to finish the course or does it not matter? Well, if you have a serious infection and you need antibiotics, and that's, that's when it is important to take antibiotics, you then should take the full course, the, the full course in the right dose, the right duration, the right number of tablets a day, uh, otherwise it's not going to adequately treat the infection. And if you use a lower dose of antibiotics or don't complete the course, you're more likely to, uh, for the bacteria to become resistant.
Is it the body that becomes resistant? Is it me? Or is it something else that becomes resistant? Now, that's, that's an interesting question, because it's a common misunderstanding. When people take antibiotics, it's not them that become resistant to the antibiotics. It's the bugs inside them. Uh, now, we're covered from head to toe in good bugs. Bacteria are good. Um, and antibiotics are designed to, to kill the, uh, the invading, the bad, the pathogenic bacteria. Um, but overexposure of those bacteria to the antibiotic makes the bacteria become resistant, not you yourself. Um, so what happens in the future if antibiotic resistance continues and gets worse in the future? Yeah. <clears throat> well, th th it is a real risk that we have increasing global antibiotic resistance. And, and the, the major problem is that we won't be able to carry out the, the highly technical, advanced medicine that we currently enjoy. So we're living in an antibiotic era. Um, if you think back in history to 70 years ago, we had no antibiotics. Many people died from relatively minor bacterial infection. We've forgotten about all that because we've had this fantastic resource, antibiotics, which have lasted about 70 years, but we're in real danger of entering a post-antibiotic era unless we all do something about it and take responsibility for it. It's a bit like um, climate change, you know. We, we all need to take responsibility for, for reducing the damage we do to the environment. So it's it's a kind of you know, ecological problem that we've all got. Uh, and the best way to do that is to use antibiotics responsibly.